Well, hello there, Vlad here. Welcome to my studio and welcome to Master the Basics, a video and podcast series where we have a guest teach us some guitar slash music related skill that will help you to get better at your music and your musical journey. And today we have a really, really cool guest. We have Mr. Mika Tyska, aka Mr. Fastfinger, live from Finland. Uh, I don't remember the place where you're from. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Mika, and uh, I'm uh, yeah. I'm currently at Askola. Askola, interesting. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Mika is a fantastic, fantastic instrumental songwriter. Uh, I think you might have heard his music already, and. I really wanted to have him as a guest because there's something about his way of writing songs that just keeps me interested. And like, they don't like you don't pay attention to hey, this is a cool like a backing track with some guitar shredding. No, they're like actually very well written songs and take you like on journeys and stuff. And I kind of want to dive into Mika's kind of mindset of how he writes stuff. And I'm gonna start with a very difficult question or very broad question let's put it that way what do you think makes a great instrumental song or like what kind of instrumental songs you like uh, yeah that's a, <laughs> a good question and I, spe- I i actually wrote down a couple of things that that popped to my mind uh this morning and uh the, number one was it's not the lyrics <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> and actually that's that's one of the uh key things uh to keep in mind since there are no lyrics it's a uh you have to kind of compensate uh with maybe focus on other aspects of of music a little bit more uh since you can't rely on creating interesting lyrics that people can kind of uh somehow connect with and um, to me uh, a great song with or without lyrics it's it's about it, it has to somehow make you move it's either emotional side or your shake your booty kind <laughs> of uh, side so it has to somehow move something in the listeners and um, I th- I kind of um, to me uh, it's I want to create and I like to uh, when I listen to music I like to somehow feel something I like it to be some kind of experience so uh, that's one of my my key things I I want to create experiences for the listener um, it's kind of like a movie with what has like beginning, middle and ending and uh, something has to happen there uh, and uh, how you keep it interesting and how it becomes like a some kind of experience and adventure for the listener and uh, one of my friend James Spectrum from Pepe Deluxe uh, somewhere he said that we're we're not creating songs or tunes we are uh, building worlds and that kind of uh, Mm. says it all pretty well in two words it's uh the world is a little bit more abstract since there are no lyrics but um, so uh, but you can still create scenes and I I kind of see the abstract side of instrumental uh, world it's more interesting since uh, it's more open to the uh, the listener to kind of illustrate what's it all about, and that's one side that I've really enjoyed. When it, since I've created a lot of these tunes, and sometimes even from my you know band members, Lasse and Thomas, when we are working on new songs and we listen to those before like band rehearsal or something, and they start kind of. Uh, telling what kind of movie or, or or scenes what they actually see in their heads and uh, the kind of uh, instrumental music can can be uh, the experience is 
different with each listener and uh, and that's a very interesting side so and when I'm uh, well when I cre- when I start composing music I don't really many times I kind of s- just start with something uh, I'll this is the second question I see <laughs> but sure, sure, sure. but uh, just like uh, I, I kind of at some point when I'm composing the song, I might start feeling that this song is to me about something, and uh, I start putting more pauku um, in Finnish, uh, more <laughs> emphasis of trying to make the song really kind of give that kind of uh, impression to the audience. Like uh, once, uh, it's a long time ago. My daughter was maybe. Uh, three or four years old and I was working on an EP called String Weaver and there was so- one song that I had I, I was working on and I-, I-, I was listening to the tracks in the morning with, with my daughter and, and uh, I-, I-, I started asking her like what do you think of this song what does it what kind of images does it bring to your mind mm. And I played the track number three, and and she said like, it's night, and there are owls, like Twin Peaks kind of thing. <laughs> she she had not <laughs> or haven't seen Twin Peaks yet, but anyway, it was night, and there's some owls, and it was really uh, incredible moment as I've already r- titled the song uh, Night Visions, and she. Whoa. They didn't know anything about the title or the idea of the song, but but that song clearly had a night feeling to it, to myself. But I, it was kind of interesting that such a small kid could kind of somehow sense that similar way. So that was really interesting. And what I did later on, it wasn't that moment yet, but in the middle s- section of that song, I really wanted to emphasize that thing for the listener. So I actually added like this night owl sounds and <laughs> and maybe some crickets i think this kind of interesting bongo and guitar trading licks kind of solo there and I kind of, there was some atmosphere that i really tried to create that kind of a little bit more like a jungle in the night mid- middle of the night kind of vibe uh but <laughs> but i think that song really uh was a success personally i think it was success in kind of creating some kind of almost like cinematic scene for the uh in with with the uh, pretty abstract ways i just used some of the sound effects to kind of make sure the audience gets it even (laughs) 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 like certainly but Mm. this all um this is all kind of like uh the visual side or experience side of of seeing the thing of course there's the uh just the same thing uh as is as any uh song or with lyrics or not it's a if song should stand out somehow uh out of the rest there's no point in uh i don't see real any point in except for the practicing purpose perhaps trying to uh kind of copy somebody else's song or try to create similar music as somebody else. Uh, obviously, we all have kind of like uh, influences and things, but kind of, to me, one of the key elements is to somehow find a way to squeeze something out of my personality and kind of respect that and, and bring that out. Uh, it kind of uh, having the kind of like your own voice makes the the whole thing more um what's the word makes the whole thing feel way, way much more worth it even mm. uh, but yeah and rhythm harmony melody sound all the basic elements has to be there and mm. uh, but again since we don't have a I mean, when you listen to music with a vocals, uh, you many times fall in love with the sound of a singer, and um, you hear. Sometimes you just need one great song by a band or an artist, 
and, and you fall in love with something with that voice and maybe kind of like the way of how how the singer phrases and what kind of uh, uh, the idea of how he builds his melodies and all these things and I think guitar player or instrumental uh, instrumental artist should somehow find a way to have that expression in his or her voice it it's not easy task but uh, somehow get the personality out and find way to kind of uh, I call it singing through the instrument or singing through the guitar uh, uh, it goes to the more to the how, how I would improvise and play guitar in general but it, it kind of uh, it's the top layer of the uh, of the song is is the melody which is to me it's the most important element anyways so that mm. that singing but it it's well just to I might point out uh, create melody uh, let's have four notes how do you get that sounding good I mean it, it just can't do it like that or you can but it might oh. oh what else what whatever ways you can figure out to make it sound uh Um, mm. just kind of like the uh, like a singer would sing she or he doesn't just sing the notes and add some lyric and, and while saying the lyrics aloud it's it's the, the, there's some something uh, else there mm. uh, yeah I don't know did I answer the question <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah I think you did uh, I'm going to kind of uh, jump to a thing that we maybe don't have as a listed question. It doesn't really matter, actually. Um, I think, like, the way you describe your music, there's definitely, like, a cinematic element to it. Because um, I think, unlike many other kind of guitar, kind of guitar-led instrumental artists, uh, I don't feel your songs are, like... I know some artists write their kind of lead guitar melodies as vocal lines, and that works really well for them. I feel like, well, Joe Satriani might be one, for example, it's very kind of vocal-like, on many of his songs at least. But yours are like, there's bits and pieces of melodies here and there, but it's not like, it's not exactly like vocal kind of lead melodies, I'd say. Uh, or does it vary for you from song to song? Oh, that's one of the things uh, um, when I write song, if, especially if I'm thinking a, uh, if I'm working on a full album or EP or something that that's several songs or even within one song. Uh, it's like a movie uh, with, you know, uh, if it was always just like the, the uh, kind of like the selfie shot of the main actor kind of gets boring. <laughs> so, so, um, there needs to, needs to be some uh, variation and contrast and and things happening to keep it interesting and and uh, it's I try to invent various ways to keep keep it interesting for myself and somehow hopeful and I hope that it's interesting for the listener as well. So uh, the more ways you can kind of. Uh, express and and make the the abstract message go through come come <laughs> pass and and it's, it's the better it is um i mean if if you're uh like if all your notes are you have a lot of whammy bar there and a lot of like this uh, very organic sound it, it kind of becomes whatever you do if you do only one thing it kind of becomes a standard and after a couple of minutes or it kind of 
the uh, there's no surprise or there's no uh, it kind of starts uh, you, you start losing the interest in it as a listener so uh, but if you have a little bit of something else for a while like that other character coming in or a wider shot of the the thing or very close-up shot or um, different colors and night instead of day and whatever um, uh, round object instead of very uh, like a box kind of thing uh, all the contrast makes refreshes the scene then you can come mm. back to that original thing again it sounds great so um, that's one of the key elements in song and, and music in general contrasts because if you don't know Mika is also a visual artist and kind of it all makes more sense now <laughs> to me I think that's a fantastic way to look at songwriting like not only like hear the scenes but kind of visualize the scenes that is interesting like I, I don't think I've ever thought about it that way before I love it that yeah, it it makes total sense actually. Now that you think about it, uh, so how do you like when you start writing the song? Is it like do you start just for example noodling and then see what comes up and then maybe start start applying those kind of the uh, kind of that thinking of like it, this might be the opening scene or maybe this is actually like the big fight or whatever. Or is it like, do you have, do you already have like some sort of idea of, okay, this is the kind of feeling I want to go to? Or like, I, I want to do like a nice chill drive type of thing on like a California beach or something. I think, is it Palma Drive from your latest <laughs> release? Because that, that, that's the scene I have when I listen to that song. It's like, yeah, nice and chill. And there's like 80s sounds. And uh, anyone who's played GTA Vice City, that that's like brings me back to my childhood playing that game listening to that kind of music and to me it was the uh outrun game of the 80s when uh you you could find it uh with commodore 64 you could find it in, uh, in like a gas station or or ferry boats where you could play the uh ar arcade version of that um and it's been released in so many uh various versions of crappy <laughs> video game crap cra graphics but uh, um, uh, there were so many things. Uh, first of all, uh, sometimes <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. I just start doing something. But first of all, noodling, especially with the guitar, it, to me it's like uh, it doesn't go anywhere, usually. Mm. Rarely it really becomes anything. So I kind of try to avoid noodling. I'm, so I might have some kind of feeling that I uh, try to approach how I succeed going that direction, it's another thing. Uh, it might depend on how awake or what's the mood of my, the, the mood of that day. And, uh, but I might, you know, I, I just usually might start with, with like thought, okay, let's start composing. Do I feel like, uh, do I need currently, uh, if I'm thinking of like an album, uh, I just, Previous days, I've composed very slow tempo songs. I'll, let's do something up tempo. So I put fast tempo to the sequencer, and then um, if if I have no idea, I might uh, by feeling I'll I'll choose some kind of uh, synth sound or a drum machine that, and I start putting something there like like this. And, <laughs> and, and if I feel you know, what's great about using sequences and, and, uh, and recording stuff is uh, you just create something and uh, if play back and listen to that if, did it make any sense? no, take a new take there was something interesting wait a second, there were some wrong notes because I'm a very crappy keyboard player I don't know if this actually is being heard there. But anyways, uh, I play some random stuff and uh, oh, there was something interesting, although the notes were almost all wrong, but I, I will correct those notes and uh, suddenly I have some kind of melody or some kind of pattern that sounds interesting. And I immediately hear, okay, there they could be like a bass that could back that harmony-wise. So I could have like dun, 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 that kind of thing and put that on there. 
And then I, will, of, of course, start thinking, well, maybe a drum pattern that could support that. And uh, then I maybe add another synth layer, more harmony based thing, where I kind of start building from the pa original pattern and the, and the bass. And I, I add some kind of uh, more like a harmony based synth line. And then I realized the original keyboard pattern thing was totally crapped. I delete that. But I, I have all the three other elements already. And um, I listen to that. That makes sense. Yeah. And then I think, well, yeah, I, actually, that's only four bar long loop that kind of gets boring. So I add four more bars to that a little bit of variation in drumming. So it's the second one is so I have eight bar long <laughs> loop now. So it's more interesting. Yeah. That was probably ZZ top, but and, <laughs> <laughs> rip off. But uh, and also I might do a little bit variation to that. Um, what's going on with the other instruments. But then uh, hopefully if I hear any melody, I listen to that, it's on loop, so I kind of start sending, sensing some kind of melody note that might go on top of that. And then I just add that there and I haven't probably touched the guitar at all. Or I might, depends. But um, one of the, um, I don't remember the question anymore, but one, one of the key things to me is when I try to compose, when I start a song, if it starts to, you know, cooking <laughs> if it starts to cook uh, and I feel there's some potential there uh, I I know by uh, experience that I'm in the I'm in that scene right now even though I might not know what it is actually but I'm in inside that scene I'm a little bit blind but uh, what I need to do quickly is write a B part to complement that hmm. so don't do the mistake by writing that one riff and then going uh, on a lunch break and come back two months later and wonder what could could you possibly do to finish the song. That's the because then you're grown up like you're two months or two hours or two weeks older, and so many things has happened. The coronavirus hit and it, things just changed. So uh, it's very hard for you to comment and compliment that original part now. So uh, my my tip number one is to, oh number ten is to ha try to compose all the necessary, the most important parts of that song, at least A and B part. With those you can build a song really easy. I mean, write the B part and. Uh, then you can kind of, it's kind of easy to squeeze out the full song out of that. And um, yeah. And the B part, usually uh, it's a good idea to think about if you had a, like A part with which, again, the contra contrast thing. If you, uh, if, if you think in terms of contrast, if the original part had like, if, if it was riff based and kind of static in harmony side, uh, you might want to have the B part to have more like uh, like chord progression that kind of starts moving the thing up more around and keep it more you know interesting in harmony sense. And uh, there's a secret thing that not too many people have realized with harmony. I mean, great melody is actually when when somebody says that, "Wow, you're playing so melody melodic," or "That's a great mm -hmm. melody." It's usually because of the harmony. Uh, people start complimenting your melody when there's harmony behind your playing. You can play just a few notes, but with the right harmony, it becomes it's it starts it starts to sound rich and and interesting and and moving. <laughs> it's uh, it's a funny thing, but anyway, the contrast. So if you had a drum pattern that was kind of like a spare, all if you had that, what what that? Then you might do a B part, which is like a, maybe you move from the hi hat to right symbol, or or maybe you do a half 
time feeling that is so it kind of slow kind of like a half time feeling so it kind of doesn't go that fast forward or maybe you do it double time or more active so you have a little bit more kick drum and and uh, I don't know a little bit more hits than the A part and, and um, yeah the contrast thing and maybe uh, if the um, if you want to refresh the original A part modulate to some other key and make it kind of like sound a little bit refreshing so if you want if you're in a minor you could modulate it to a c minor whatever or change completely like a, do a mode modulation where you would go to a different mode and base your chord progression to a totally different color and somehow make it work but the contrast that's it that's the key thing kind of comp find a way to complement the other original part so you've refresh the whole setting so it's great when you come back to the original a part again it sounds great again yep um, and yeah I don't know that's that's my answer to the question whatever it was <laughs> whatever it was I mean actually I love that point about like Kind of capturing a moment like you mentioned like do a a and b part uh i've actually like now that you've actually said it i realize that that's a mistake i'm sometimes making i can come up with a really great riff and like yes i managed to capture that riff now i'll go for a lunch break or like yeah come out come back to it next day and suddenly i have no idea what to write next really really great point i'll absolutely try that one yeah Chris. and and, yeah. and it and yeah. don't get stuck don't fall in love with the first a part to like don't don't just start doing little details there and and kind of forget yourself in that one place once you get kind of like the you feel like okay we got an idea this is starting to work go to the b part that that'll give you even though if you aren't taking a real break like taking a walk or go to the toilet or anything at least you kind of give yourself a break uh of that setting in a part when you go to b part and try to create that thing once you come back to a part you will hear it with different kind of more refreshing ears mm -hmm. since you kind of visited the the other part and and then you that probably will uh kind of uh give you new ideas how how you can take it forward that part again so uh, yeah but it's good idea to uh learn to write all the necessary parts uh, on one go definitely I mean you can write a bridge later afterwards and intros you can create just like just putting just the solo button on the drum beat and that's your intro if nothing else and the most important is the A and B part sort of like the verse and chorus in, in terms of uh, uh, songs yeah I've already <laughs> learned a lot. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially like lately I've been doing this song thing where I like, yeah, I was do like, actually this week I was doing exactly that thing. I like, I really focused on the A part and like getting the guitars right and getting the kind of chords right and everything. There's like a melody and guitars. And then I left it and actually came back to it yesterday as I'm shooting this video. And... I had no idea what to do with it. Like, I had no idea where it should go next. So I just started like to browsing through drum loops and see where maybe those would give me an idea. Yeah, I need to try that out. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So uh, if somebody wants to get into instrumental songwriting and just songwriting in general, what now that they're inspired by all of this talk, uh, what kind of tips you would get give to people who kind of want to get into songwriting but i'm not sure where to start mm, well i think the number one tip is to kind of learn the uh, little kid inside you it's, it's uh i call it uh making music like like playing with lego blocks even though when you think music if it sounds like blocks in the end it kind of it's not always a positive compliment I, I would guess but um, kind of like uh, 
like playing like playing with toys kind of thing is great idea a little bit of uh, uh, just exploring and having an adventure and and uh, trying uh, for me one of the key elements is try to invent as many ways to start building or, or creating a song is good so I, I kind of try to try different sounds and currently I kind of uh, feel a little bit of um, what's the word I, I like to play with tapes again and right now I kind of want to explore using some tape loops and things kind of keep I haven't really done that so it kind of uh, uh, I want to try if that kind of brings something new to the game and possibly using some um, like um, I did that as a young kid or when I was 18 20 I, I did a lot of music that was based on around musical elements of course but also a lot of sound effects and and uh, like uh, I would record sounds in the wherever I would go the music festivals I would record people telling weird stories and I would record sounds in, of like go record like field recording birds in the forest and and um, I might want to explore a little bit of that side uh, even though it can easily get out of hand and go into weird areas but uh, it's just kind of like uh, explore different ways, but also the kind of just learn to put together a song. I mean, uh, I've uh, I've had some students where I'm I've been more like a mentor of uh, helping them realize our, and kind of build put together a song. Uh, it's a a lot of people are just having trouble finishing a song putting it I mean all, like it's like in life in general all people get great ideas but not everybody actually makes them happen it takes a little bit extra effort to make it happen and songwriting is exactly like learning to play the guitar or any instrument it's the uh, you have to learn that you have to practice that a lot and uh, the more you practice the more you do it and if you only learn and practice to write riffs, that's what you will learn. But if you actually learn to finish a song, put it put together a piece of music uh, that somehow makes sense, uh, possibly, then uh, you become better at that, and hmm. uh, it becomes easier and easier. Uh, the more you do it, uh, and the more you. Um, yeah, it's it, the easier it gets, and one of the key things also is just decide to write a shit song. <laughs> That's the easiest way because people create all these writer blocks. I want to create my masterpiece now, and I will do it now. You, yeah. <laughs> yes, me. You. Oh yes, I. That was my writer's block for ten years, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but try to try to write a shit song, and it's uh, it's funny how um, how a lot of great songs are built like that. It's it's usually the stupid riffs that kind of are ideas that kind of pump out cool ideas, and uh, those are the ones that stand out. So uh, that's one thing, and also write as many of those songs as possible. I mean, don't try to write one song. Try to finish all the songs because um, uh, w a couple of years ago I did this project Night Overdrive album, which wasn't an album. It was still like a it was a um, project that I set myself like a dogma, where um, I wrote myself rules how I would write a song every day. Well, at least three or three four times a week. Uh, I got my Wait a second. <laughs> For those who are just listening, Mika just left some place, so we'll see when he'll be back. Yeah, oh, look, he's, he's back. back. He's back. <laughs> uh, man behind the mask. Uh, I I got myself this four tracker tape recorder, and uh, I started buying all these cassettes, and uh, I, and I uh, I didn't know why, except that I kind of felt that. Why was the songwriting and making music so fast and easy when I was a kid? 
when I was a teenager, uh, I didn't have even my own four tracker. What I had was my brother, older brother had one and he had also a drum machine. And what I could do is I could borrow his gear for weekend. And what I would do is uh, I would spend that whole weekend and write as many songs as I could possible, possibly do and, and record those. So it was easily like six, seven songs during one week and it was a lot of fun and well a lot of those were very like rushed crappy playing and a lot of potential but never really took the most out of those but it was still fun and it was super fast and now like finishing a song and getting it released is like two years it's not a, like it's nothing like when you when you work on an album it easily takes two years three we three years or for some guys it takes ten years or more and it's it's so slow and it's kind of frustrating at times. So I, I did, decided to do this project where I, I would take a the four tracker, which gives me four mono tracks, and then um, on a cassette, and then uh, I would use my iPad with a, a Cork gadget app, where I would um, I would uh, I would be able to create the uh, Let's see if this actually opens. Black screen. <laughs> this my old iPad is. It's starting to get kind of old. It start. It, it wants to retire soon. But well, yeah, I have a empty empty idea here. But with this, I can anyways create a uh, very quickly some sequences like drum machine, mm. bass, synth, and all all the sounds necessary for a backing track everything else except the guitar so i would quickly yeah i try my my uh, my method or the dogma was to write a song in uh I, I, originally i thought it would be 45 minutes to write a song and record it it didn't happen in that quick too many times but i was able to write these songs in two or three hours and i would try to compose and do this as quickly as possible so I felt like there's a gun in my head finish it finish it finish it and uh, every morning I would you know come here with my cup of coffee and I would start just doing it without thinking and uh, that helped me realize something if I would finish what I started even as I felt this is this is not becoming anything that is usable nobody uh, this is like a shitty song but i committed to my rule of finishing the song every time so uh, a lot of the songs were actually great some of the uh, actually my favorite song on the album i felt that this is so cheesy i can't release this and it, it's it's going to be it's not going to happen but uh after a break and listen listening to it back the the following day or something i realized it's it's uh it's pure gold <laughs> and uh so one of the things is overthinking so you have to be careful with that uh, how do you mm. evaluate is is an idea good or not usually the best ideas are the first ones that come out and so uh one go do, trying to ask well it can be hard if you're not experienced as a writer to finish and do everything at one go but try to accomplish at everything at least the core of the song immediately so that's that's one of the tips what was the question again <laughs> <laughs> the question was like yeah tips for people who want to get into songwriting and I think there's a lot, a friend of mine actually, like something that you mentioned, a friend of mine has said for years now that the best song is the one that's actually finished and released. Because once you do that for the first time, it kind of opens up the gates, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. I have that experience. I think I released my first song in 20, I want to say 2014, unless I'm forgetting something, 14 or 15. Yeah. And that that's like the simplest song you could have. The intro and the verses just, like C, G, D or something like very kind of country popish and yeah, it's a super simple song. But I got it out. It was a song I wrote myself. It's still out there, and after that, it became so much easier. Yeah, yeah, and 
exactly. I mean, a lot of the greatest songs are. I mean, the the core of the song is very simple. So that that's mm-hmm. a that's a that's a great tip that you you just said aloud. Keep it simple. Uh, the more simple the the uh, the structure, the the core of the song is, the easier it is to kind of finish it as well. And also, it easier it's it's usually easier for the listener to kind of get behind the song if it's a little bit more simple. Uh, I mean, you can do complex complex stuff on top of that if you f- if you feel like playing weird guitar and stuff. But it it kind of uh, that's also a contrast thing, uh, mm. like the. Um, uh, one rule to think it's not a rule but kind of a theory uh, if you have a fast song play slow on top of that or if you have a f- slow song you can play fast on top of that think about all the guitar virtuoso uh, ballads <laughs> but 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 anyway so if you have a um, uh, low note if you play low low notes play high notes and, and, but also simple structure you can play complex shit on top of that if you want, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but yeah, keep it simple. Do just do that and and uh, finish the song. And well, I would say you don't need to release all the songs. Well, maybe uh, in UK your case probably was the absolutely right thing to put it out. Mm-hmm. And 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 I have I don't think I've heard the song, but. Uh, it doesn't really matter if, if you felt that that's that's you there, and if it if you are able to stand behind it, just put it out. It's that's the right thing. But uh, in general, I would say uh, rather than writing one song and not sure if it's good or not, write ten songs and and uh, pick the the two three or maybe eight of them are great, and you can just forget about or. Kind of like leave the other, the, the the crappier ones, and and write another set of songs and and you know uh, the more you do it, the more you actually get those good ones coming out. It's that's the secret. You don't you just don't write great songs. They happen if they happen. You just write songs and write shit songs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. One thing. One more thing I want to ask is like. Um, do you ask your like? Do you have a group of friends, for example, who you ask for feedback? Some like do you do it often? Do you do it at all, or do you do it sometimes? Um, when it comes to creative work, at least I've kind of many times feel insecure to ask a lot of people. I've kind of learned to trust my own instinct, basically. Uh, and my wife is too over critic, so I've kind of learned. I usually, in a in a sensitive place or moment, I, I I'm not going to ask her opinion. I I rather kind of um have time with it. I I can kind of especially if I'm working on an album, within a month or or a year, I can I can come back to that song. I if I'm produced and really recorded, I can tell that. Okay, this song didn't live. I mean, it worked. It sounded great for the first week or month, but then there's something that it just doesn't have that thing. So I, I might just use it as a bonus track, or maybe I'll come back to it in three years and see if there's something that I can, you know, fix that. But then there are songs that still they just work after a long time, and I can be sure about. And also, uh, well, many times we also work on the songs as a band. So uh, Lasse and Thomas, they're the first ones to kind of uh, get involved. And they, uh, well, they most probably, and, and, th- and they always have their impact over the song as well. So that that will, that will affect the song and also a kind of a, I might, and I, Especially Thomas is a great uh, guy to kind of ask if I kind of feel unsure about things, and so he might have um, some great opinions how to what to try and and maybe if the if I'm having sometimes 
it get kind of it gets complex with the song and kind of the structure might be like kind of like like a puzzle that you try try to somehow fix and maybe an, another set of brains can kind of uh, suddenly see how to fix that and they, yeah well I have one like a the, the James Spectrum Yarisalo from Pepe Deluxe like uh, he's like my my friend in making weird art and and kind of uh so i might say sometimes ask his tips or some i think with the ori the first debut album i had a song called epic and that the structure of that song kind of became too epic and he he had a i asked his opinion and he just replied me with an edit of that i had i sent him a stereo track and he just edited quickly roughly on on stereo editor and and just kind of like gave me an idea how i could actually simplify it and make it more accessible and make sense and so that was great sometimes you kind of get stuck so uh it's a good idea to have people to you know test drive it but also you have to be sure that it's a if you're in a sensitive moment different opinions just might distort your thoughts and you kind of lose the focus so you also need to kind of learn to trust your own you're the director if you're the if you're the like a uh, dictator of the of the music like i feel i am i like to well i like to have my special guys come in like bass bass and drum thomas and lasse kind of give their impact and their they they help building the, the song but I I need to kind of be the one who kind of tells that okay this works this doesn't work because it kind of takes the song or the focus the wrong direction I mean uh, you kind of have to see have to to look at the whole song from the the wide perspective to see uh, how it works yeah what else <laughs> <laughs> no that, that that's great like yeah again part of the whole learning process you might ask someone for an opinion it might help it might actually not be good for you it depends i guess it's also about like all of this takes time as guitar players we know it takes time to build up your skills same goes to songwriting and also like finding the different ways that work for your process and yeah makes a lot of sense yeah it makes once as, as you you will find it that it goes exactly like that there there is moments that you just can't ask somebody else's opinion you have to kind of have you have to do it yourself nobody else will do that mm. well there are people yeah. uh, i mean it's kind of like in especially pop music and and the the, the songs are written by a group of be people and uh, there's sides to that and I, well, I but I, when it comes to my music uh, the, the, the Mr. Fastfinger music I kind of learned it pretty quickly that uh, I will need to have have to be the kind of like the dictator um, after the first album we tried a little bit of like and like rough ideas and we would try those at band rehearsal room and I the guys came up with great ideas but they were totally wrong ideas <laughs> because uh, you have to kind of learn to understand what's the direction of your your music I mean your music can't be everything in the world or otherwise it will be just like a collection of things you have you, you kind of have your vision about the, the, the music there it's tip certain type of harmonies that that you like and uh, certain type of melodies that you like and, and rhythms and things you have to kind of uh, take those uh, sometimes it's great to have somebody outside like a musician come up with his ideas and then you just need to learn to evaluate is that idea that supports and take this song to uh, the higher level and it really works with that or is it this idea that it just distracts and kind of takes it to wrong place that doesn't really 
belong to this movie or this scene or this this song so um it's like a like a movie if it's a uh like a serious like horror movie it's, it's like if you have tim carrey coming in it might might be challenging to make make it work because he's coming from different genre the same kind of thing kind of works with musicians if you're having guest musicians or if you work with like musicians you have to kind of it's like casting uh, what style of player what type of player would really complement your music if you have wrong type of playing you try to make him sound like this and but in real life real life he's actually like this it's hard to kind of make force that guy to go there to the uh, different style and yeah to uh, to produce and and write song there's a lot of different things that kind of uh are involved in all these li little things but in the end it's just about playing with these lego blocks that's mm -hmm. where it starts and, and kind of uh keeping your ears open to listen is this sounding good is this going to the right direction or what's this b part that i just wrote is it actually going to wrong direction i don't like it so i just delete that and try something else so uh kind of always have that ear open for the right direction yeah interesting well if you're just listening to this show then you cannot tell that i'm smiling all the time because i feel super inspired by <laughs> Mika's told us but if you watch a video you can see me smiling because yeah i kind of want to get in back back to writing my songs even though i'll have to work after this and do some completely other stuff but yeah me too this, <laughs> same, same. <laughs> life does get in the way sometimes or many times actually but man Thank you so much. If you guys haven't check out his channel, like Big has a YouTube channel as well, which is great. And there's obviously a bunch of his albums available on like all of the streaming media, I think. And yeah, well, well also the Spotify. Yeah, yep. I also have a video or two about uh, songwriting. And there's one mm. video that I did where I actually demonstrate how I wrote music with the four track, uh, the iPad and guitar, where I create a song on the spot and that might be an interesting uh, thing to watch it's kind of like showing how simple it can be mm. it's not the greatest song I ever wrote I haven't published it in any albums or anything or officially but it's a great example of kind of like how to keep it simple and yeah yeah we'll be sure to put that link to the description of on the youtube side and if you're listening to the podcast you can not podcasts just one podcast maybe more podcast after yes one podcast uh just search mr fast finger on youtube i think that's the best way to find it because mika tuska i don't think all of you guys have that last letter on your keyboards so search for Mr. Fastfinger, I think you'll find him, right? Only the special ones have that key. Yes, we're the special ones. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video or this podcast, or bo uh, technically it's both, please feel free to leave a comment down below and hit the subscribe button as well. That would help a lot. Check out Mika's channel as well. And thanks for watching slash listening. More episodes of Master the Basics available on playlist here on YouTube and on whatever podcast service you're using. There's more episodes available there as well. Let's get this guitar learning journey up to speed. We have plenty of time available right now during the whole COVID thing. So yeah, <laughs> time to do some work and then start writing some music later today. Thank you, Mika. Thanks, Thank you guys sir. for watching. I shall see you next time.